us. What do we have here? A pool spectator chair. Not a place we want to be. We want to be on that table running racks. But when we're sitting in this chair, are we really that helpless? The answer might just surprise you. Hey guys, I'm Andreas Eichmuller and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about one of my favorite topics about pool, pool psychology. Most specifically, I like to call it engagement. So what got me onto this topic was I saw a meme recently posted, I think on Facebook by Florian Kohler. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And it had a picture of Ralph Suquet sitting on a chair and it had two paragraphs. Let's talk about it. A pool player confined to their chair lives out a unique form of tortured helplessness. It is a cruel form of punishment where you get to ringside seat to witness your opponent celebrating your error by making it his golden opportunity. You can look away, but you can't run away. All you can do is sit there helplessly and sweat it out. What? Helplessly sweat it out? No, I don't believe that. I call hogwash. There's lots a player can do to stay engaged in the match while sitting in the spectator chair. Now I talked to a few friends about what this video was gonna be about and one friend said it was, oh, you wanna talk about hustling? Another friend said, oh, that's just sharking. My wife said, oh, you wanna talk about being a dick? I call this engagement, staying competitive. Now look, I'm not saying that this is a good place to be. It's not. We don't want to be sitting in this chair, but invariably we're going to sit there from time to time. So what can we do as a person sitting here? Your opponent is clear in the table, going round and round, unbeatable, in stroke. What can we do to get that person off their game? Now, some people watching this video are gonna say, no, I, I can't do this, this is underhanded. But the important takeaway here is, is if you're not going to do this, fine, that's fine, but understand that it's out there. Players might try to do this to you. So this is about getting your mental game where it has to be. So let's set the stage for the match. Okay, first scenario is what I call the frozen ball. Let's take a look. So let's try to dissect what just happened here. The player notifies the player sitting that the ball is not frozen. The player sitting says, mm, I'm going to check for myself. This is purposeful. She sees that it's off the rail. She goes and checks anyway. What is that telling her? That's telling her opponent, eh, I don't trust you. She's trying to get under her skin. Has she broken a rule? No, she hasn't broken a rule by doing this. So if that's in your arsenal, do it. And if you as the shooter see that happen, don't let it affect you because for some people it does. Let's watch this scenario again, but see a different result. Now let's break down what happened there. She didn't go over and check this time. She's obviously gauged that her opponent is mentally strong enough. She needs to do something different. So she's decided to take a different route. She says, oh, it's okay. I trust you. 
it can be confusing. It's just a mind game. It's out there, so be aware of it. Okay, here's our next scenario. This one is calling the ref. Don't be ashamed to call the ref. Slow your opponent up. Let's take a look. Okay, let's break this one down. And this one kinda is a no-brainer. If there is a shot that's close, call a ref over. Don't be afraid. Remember, the name of the game is slowing your opponent up, getting them out of their groove. So call the ref over. It goes to the shooter if a ref isn't there. Okay, so here's the final scenario. And this one comes up a lot too. It's called line of sight. You want to stay out of the line of sight of the shooter. It's only polite. Or you sit there and you don't move one muscle. Because if you move, you could distract them. So watch what happens in this scenario. Okay, let's break this one down. This one's amusing. It happens all the time that a spectator is in your line of sight. But what happened here was the spectator waited until the shooter bent over and then she said, oh, hold on, let me get out of your line of sight. And it worked. The shooter actually stood up and started her pre-shot routine again. So that's all you can hope for. Now, is it gonna work? Is she gonna miss the shot? Maybe, maybe not, but you took your shot. You're engaged, you're in the match. You're sitting in the spectator chair, but you're still playing. So in conclusion, what can we take away from what we've talked about here today? Well, first of all, we didn't break one rule. In all three of these scenarios, we did not break one rule in the rule book. Did we push the boundaries? Maybe. A little bit, but it's okay. We didn't break the rules. Two, if you're not okay doing any of these things, that's fine. But what's important is you have to understand that it happens out there. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it's going to happen. Just give it time. The higher you go up and the more competitive you get, you're going to encounter people that will incorporate some of these strategies. And you know what? That's just three strategies. There's probably a hundred things that you can try to do to get under your opponent's skin and throw them off their game. So just be aware of it. The mental game is just as important as the physical game, as the muscle memory. So remember that. If you thought this video was awesome, please subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment in the comments section for future videos. I don't like doing the drill videos. My friend Andrew Jaworski at Jaworski Pool Practice, he's doing some awesome videos about drills. I wanna do more of the psychological side of the game. So please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.